This is Channel 25 WVTT Olean. Now, from the Twin Tiers' biggest broadcast news operation, this is the 6 o'clock report with Jeff Andrelonis and Alexa Olson. Listen on News Radio 96.7 WVTT or watch on News Channel 25 WVTT television. WVTT proudly presents the 6 o'clock report. Good evening. I'm Alexa Olson. Jeff Andrelonis is off tonight. Topping the 6 o'clock report. It was this state audit that was released last week. It highlights allegations of Carrollton Town Supervisor Dave Frederick using equipment for his own personal use. Many local residents attended a town hall meeting last night in hopes to hear a discussion on this very topic. But to many people's disappointment, the subject was not brought up because town officials say that the town attorney needed to be present in order to talk about it. Things got ugly between Frederick and board member Ralph Batone, who Frederick suspended from the board. All these people come to discuss the audit, which was public knowledge now, and he claims that he talked to our attorney, and our attorney said that we cannot comment on the audit. So I called the attorney last night, and I left a message with our attorney. My, our attorney returned my call this morning and told me he didn't have any idea what I was talking about. The New York State Comptroller's Office audit allegedly showed Frederick used $15,000 worth of rental equipment for his own personal use. If you would like to read the full text of this audit, it's available on the Comptroller's website, all 22 pages of it. Well, U.S. Senator Charles Schumer is not the only one who is showing support for the Olean Tile Company. State Senator Catherine Young is also lending a hand. Young and other economic development officials are preparing a package of incentives in hopes the company will stay open. Meanwhile, Senator Catherine Young has also received high ratings from two business groups for her record to improve the economic climate and support taxpayer taxpayers in New York State. Senator Young received a 90% rating from the Business Council, the highest award in the state Senate. She also was near the top, receiving an 88% from Unshackle Upstate. It's only August 23rd, but if you've been out and about, you may have noticed something unusual for this time of year. WVTT's Derek Smith tells us about some confusing colors we've noticed. Blame it on the warm weather, says the Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. This past spring, weather has granted us with beautiful yet warm temperatures, and that has resulted in tree leaves turning colors maybe a little bit too early. The look of autumn has arrived a little premature this year, but not to worry. Experts are saying the early leaves serve as a sneak preview at what's to come in this fall foliage although some people disagree. Uh, I don't think I quite agree with that. Uh, to me, it feels just like uh, August 23rd, like any other August 23rd. And as I look up on the hills there, the Allegheny Mountains, I don't see any early change in coloration or even the, uh, usually, uh, I think usually dead trees that are on decline or old age decline or dead or decayed, they usually uh, come into foliage at first. And I don't see any of them up there either, so I, I'm highly suspicious that we're going to have an early fall as predicted. Fall, I like fall, it's a calm season, and uh, it's a very relaxing time of year, very good, warm, kind of cool down weather. What do you think about the leaves changing colors? It has to do with a little bit of the um, global warming, but uh, I think it's alright. I like the leaves, um, whatever color they are. Here a little early this year is because mostly because of the dry, dry summer that we've had and the late rains, but it's still enjoyable. The season of fall in this part of New York State is 10 times more prettier than any place else on earth. It is, we have one of the most beautiful falls in the entire United States. Well, the official first day of fall is September 21st, but already the leaves are starting to change color in preparation to this year's fall season. That's probably because there has been dry summer and recently cold mornings that might have caused this. Not to worry, that just means that we have a month longer than usual season ahead of us that we get to enjoy. You won't see me complaining though, it's just another way for Mother Nature to say, hey, I'm right around the corner. I'm Derek Smith here in Olean, 
WVTT. Our thanks to WVTT's Derek Smith for that report. Well, speaking of the unseasonable summer weather and the mild winter that our area experienced means great breeding weather for mosquitoes. The itch of a mosquito bite is one of the most common signs of summer, but with mosquito populations seemingly exploding this year in cases of mosquito-borne West Nile virus reaching unprecedented numbers nationally, it's a good idea to take a few simple precautions to reduce the chances of being bitten. WVTT reached out to Eric Holers the Environmental Health Services Director of Cattaraugus County to get the lowdown on those blood-sucking skeeters. And, uh, it's been a relatively dry summer, and we have not had high numbers of mosquitoes, have not had to do any spraying. Uh, so people should just take normal precautions to avoid uh, mosquito bites, uh, such as keeping screens on their doors and windows in good repair, uh, emptying any cleaning their gutters and keeping any containers in their yard that would hold water, uh, making sure they're dumped and empty so that, uh, mosquitoes can't breed there. And uh, if you're out at dusk and dawn, which is the uh, primary active period for mosquitoes, uh, you know, wear long sleeves, long pants, or use uh, uh, products, uh, repellents containing DEET, but use them only according to the manufacturer's instructions. As of today, the Pennsylvania Department of Health reports that West Nile virus has been found in 47 counties. Testing has returned positive results for more than 2,200 mosquito samples and from 74 dead birds. Well, a northeast Pennsylvania man is lucky to be alive today despite a head-on crash with a semi yesterday. 26-year-old Aaron Craig only suffered a road rash when he was ejected from his motorcycle along Route 76 in the town of Ripley around 7.30 p.m. yesterday, according to Chautauqua County Sheriff's Office. Craig was treated at the scene but did not have any life-threatening injuries. An 18-year-old Wellsville teen was arrested earlier this week and charged with rape in the second degree. The youth was arraigned before Village Justice O'Connor and committed to the Allegheny County Jail on $5,000 bail. The youth is due back in Wellsville Village Court on September 18th at 9 a.m. 21-year-old Joey Charles Osborne of Cowdersport was charged with homicide by motor vehicle earlier this week in connection with a fatal crash that happened in July. 16-year-old Caleb Haynes died in the crash on Route 49 in Allegheny Township in Potter County. Investigators say Haynes was a passenger in a vehicle driven by Osborne when the car left the roadway, struck a utility pole, flipped, and landed on its roof. Haynes was pronounced dead at the scene. Osborne has been recovering from serious injuries received in the crash and is now being held in lieu of bail with a preliminary hearing set for next week. Tomorrow, the Pennsylvania Department of Transportation, known as PennDOT, will reopen a bridge that has been closed and detoured since late June. The bridge spans Lewis Run on Route 4001, Lafayette Avenue, and Bridge Shanty Road in the borough of Lewis Run. Crews have been working since May to replace that bridge. PennDOT expects the new bridge to be open to, open to traffic by the end of the day tomorrow. Well, the World News Roundup is next. Don't miss it. Keep it locked on News Channel 25 WVTT.